So today I'm just going to be walking you through how to make this simple birthday cake and these files will be available on Patreon if you'd like to download them and look at them yourself. So I just started with a simple sphere and I like to add kind of bevel edges there otherwise when I add smoothing it'll sometimes kind of disrupt that uh, face at the top and kind of give it an ugly smoothing look. And then you can see here that I just went ahead and deleted the bottom face to kind of get rid of the bad smoothing on the side knowing that it was going to be on the ground and you're never going to see it anyways. Here I'm adding a few edge loops and then I'm just kind of checker deselecting that outer edge loop right there. And then I'm kind of extruding those up and kind of offsetting those just a tiny bit to kind of give that cake that little frosting on the edge here. So here's where I started experimenting with how I was going to do the frosting on the top and at first I thought I was going to do another ridge of ice cream but as you can see in the final product here in the top right I actually ended up deciding that I was going to go ahead and do more of kind of like an icing that was kind of dripping down the sides. So then I kind of had to think about how I was going to do that icing. That would take a long time to model and it would take an even longer time to model if I needed to animate it. But because I wasn't animating it I was able to kind of give it some crappy geometry. So what I did is I duplicated the cake and what I did is took the knife tool and kind of drew this kind of scribble motion all the way across and the first time here I was just doing it very quickly to kind of test if it would even work and then I kind of went ahead and redid it with a more with a, a better icing kind of drawing that I spent more time taking on so you can see here that I'm kind of going through and I'm kind of drawing with the drip and what I'm going to do is kind of cut this out get rid of the bottom vertices then I'm going to add a solidify modifier and a subdivision to hopefully kind of round out those edges now what the solidify modifier does is it kind of just adds an extra layer there whenever you have like a plane to kind of like solidify it. So if you had just a plane, it would turn it into a rectangle. And you can kind of see here that I can plate the thickness on the edges. And then I went ahead and added a subdivision modifier and had to kind of play with the settings a little bit there because some of them were getting artifacts because since I had drawn such a crappy edge loop around the whole thing, it had actually kind of created some bad ingons that the subdivision didn't really know what to do with. And as you see here, as I'm kind of moving through, I'm just cleaning up some of the points because some of them don't look that great. I'm kind of playing with the scaling and positioning there until I get something that I like for the look of the icing. After that, I wanted to add a bit more decorative elements, and this is where it's really important to kind of think about what you want to do with your design in terms of contrast and color and I wanted to add these kind of cherries around the top on top here to add a brighter color so that I could do a red knowing that I wanted something to kind of complement and contrast the pinkness of my cake that I kind of had in my mind and I spent a lot of time kind of playing around maybe doing a circle right on the top but I actually decided that it was just quicker to go ahead duplicate it there and then rotate it around the 3d cursor. There I'm just kind of playing with the cherries, kind of getting them inset there, and then going around and cleaning up some of the icing of the cake more. So at this point, I'm kind of looking in the view and trying to determine what angle I'm going to render the camera from. And that's why I'm kind of cleaning up the icing only in certain areas. So go ahead and play here. So here I'm going ahead to put the eyes onto the character. And initially here I just did some spheres and thought they were too round. So I flattened those out a bit later. But you can see what I'm doing now is kind of playing with the icing around those eyes. And here I actually kind of went ahead and deleted one of the drips and kind of went in and did some manual retopology there to kind of get the look I wanted there in between the eyes, knowing that this was going to be the important angle for the camera. Now for the eyes, I just created two spheres, and then for the little highlights on the eyes, I just created little spheres on it. And that's because I'm going for a claymation look, and I knew that the clay wasn't going to give me an actual eye highlight, so I just went ahead and manually put that in there. If you're familiar with any of my look at work at all, you know that I do that a lot in my characters. Here I'm just using the knife tool to kind of draw in my mouth and you can see that as soon as I kind of go back to smoothing it just creates a lot of artifacts and the smoothing and the normals there. So now what I'm going through is just kind of going in and drawing some other edge loops. Now I know that I'm not going to be animating this character so I'm not really concerned with the topology overall. Just enough that I can get a good render out of it knowing that I'm not going to have to deform it or anything. So I just went ahead kind of drew some edges from those vertices outwards to kind of break up those engons and get a little bit better of a smoothing option for when I have my subdivision on there. For the tongue I just created a sphere and just kind of squashed it and set that in there. Here for the text I'm just creating some text there on the side and what I'm doing 
is going through adding a little bit of bevel and at first I tried to do it kind of manually and decided to go back and do it through the text editor. Now I find that the mesh that Blender gives you is this kind of crazy triangulated mesh can be a bit difficult to work with when you're trying to do things like shade, add subdivision modifiers, add textures or anything really if you're not just putting it there statically. So what I did is I went ahead and I did a voxel remesh and I just kind of played with those settings until I got a balance between having too many faces and getting an okay look. You can see here that it gets a little bit mushy around the edges but that's okay because I'm going for a clay look and that's kind of adding to the effect anyways. The reason I wanted all that topology there is so that later I can add a modifier with a kind of clay cloud in the texture that'll kind of give the overall piece a lumpy look. I go through this in my stop motion video on how I use that technique a lot. Here I'm just creating little candles. I wanted to give them the same face as the cake and kind of like a little Easter egg for people who spend time looking at the image. They might like notice that the candles also had the same face. And what I did is I just used a little cylinder to kind of create the little wax of the candle. And then for the flame, I just took a round cube and used the kind of sphere of influence when I grabbed it to kind of pull that up and rotate around and kind of smear out a little wick on top there. For the eyes, I just went ahead and pulled the eyes from the cake and scaled them down and put them up there. Here you can see I'm appending my clay shader. I think it's really important that whenever you're doing a lot of projects, to always kind of save and keep them organized so that you can pull things in later and reuse them. And because of that, I'm able to produce art a lot quicker because over time I've kind of built up a library and my own resources that fit my style. I could always do better on this and there are applications to help out. I tend to just use kind of Blender and keep my folders organized. So here I am going through and kind of picking the colors. Now, how you pick your colors can really drastically affect the scene. I like to use a website called Color Hunt and I use Color Hunt to kind of find inspiration for my like color palettes and things like that. And a lot of times I'll kind of start there use a few basic colors from there and once i've kind of started to establish my color palette in the scene after that i can usually get through with kind of hue shifts and values and things like that so here as i'm going through i'm kind of experimenting with colors and color placements and what i want to do and in my mind i wanted to do a pink cake so i knew i needed to get that in there first and i wasn't really sure how i was going to accent it with these other colors so i kind of experimenting with that i landed on white icing because i kind of wanted a bright fun look and you can see here i'm adding an extra edge loop down there because i am just assigning these materials to the vertices so I just added an extra edge loop to kind of keep that pink down below the frosting. Of course, this is really ugly topology, but again, it's for a still image, so I'm not too concerned with it. For lighting, you can see here that I started with the sun and kind of blast it from behind with some bright lighting. I like to do that a lot to separate my character from the background. And then I just have two area light planes here. I have one area light plane coming from the back right and kind of using that to wrap around the edge of the cake and kind of add some more depth to the cake there. And then the other one I kind of used on the other front side of the face to kind of fill out. So now what I'm going to do is kind of do some of the texturing for the text and for the flame, which was gonna have a little bit more to it. So for the flame, what I went ahead and did is I created a color ramp and I fed that into the base color. And then I kind of created my own texture mapping and rotating it there and kind of pushed it up so that I could just create that flame in there without having to paint anything so that it could go from kind of an orange to a yellow and change those colors later if I wanted just using a gradient. I did go ahead and smart unwrap these just in case I wanted to texture paint them later but ended up getting the result I wanted just from the shader and the result over here. And you can see here where I'm kind of playing with them, mapping and trying to get that figured out. I feel like mapping in the world coordinates can be kind of difficult for beginners and you can see here that I kind of had it backwards so that like the color is coming from the back there so I just put this little texture map in there and was able to kind of rotate that and get it going into the correct direction there. Now for my fingerprints you see I keep plugging these value nodes into the map and that's so that I can kind of change the scale of everything uniform pretty quickly. Now for the text, I wanted to add a little bit of texture instead of just having a flat color. So I went over here to Illustrator. You could do this in Blender. You could do this in Inkscape. You could do it really in any software. You can also download a texture from online. And what I'm doing is I'm creating a stripe texture and I'm going to apply that to my text. So it can be kind of difficult to sometimes get patterns to appear the way you want on your characters. And in this case, since I was only coming from one view, it was quite simple. I was able just to UV unwrap and project from one view. 
And you can see here that I'm kind of getting a hang up where everything looks black and that's because I accidentally exported the stripes with an alpha instead of a white and black so Blender didn't know how to kind of feed that into the factor. You can see here I just rotated it 45 degrees, kind of played with some colors until I got something that I felt complemented the cake, and then kind of created my shadow plane here. And I sometimes like to go ahead and do a full psych wall because even if it's a shadow plane, it still casts that light back onto the cake. And you can see here the final result where I took it over to Photoshop and added the background.